Joseph Bauer is an assistant professor at the Perlman School of Medicine of the University of Pennsylvania. He is one of the world's leading NAD researchers. Dr. Bauer performed his postdoctoral studies with Dr. David Sinclair at the Harvard Medical School, where he developed a strong interest in the regulation of aging and metabolism by sirtuins, which require NAD as a co-substrate. A major focus of his lab is on understanding how changes in NAD metabolism contribute to aging. With that, let me start the interview. Dr. Bauer, welcome to Modern Health Span, and thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. So, Professor Bauer, you run a lab at uh, Pennsylvania University where you're primarily looking at aging, I think is, is one of your, your key, um, the key thing you're looking at. So can you explain, can you give us some background as to why you chose aging as your area of study? Yeah, I think it's just, it's one of the, the great mysteries remaining in biology. You know, it's something sort of deceptively familiar that we all experience and see, but we really have no idea why it's happening still. Uh, you know, there's a few theories out there and, you know, the simple forms of all of them are, are wrong, you know, and it's, it's kind of amazing to me that at this stage, you know, uh, in uh, of science in this area that we, we don't have a consensus on what the underlying cause of aging is. Right. Yes. And it would be interesting to discuss that, but I think maybe we'll focus on, on other things. So within aging, you looked at specifically NAD seems to be w one area that you may well have studied others, but NAD that you, you studied is, uh, is one of the kind of areas you studied at. So why NAD within kind of aging? Yeah, I think that this area has been particularly attractive to, to me and, and to others, I think, because I, it just affords a, an opportunity for a, a real intervention. Right? So NAD comes from vitamin B3 derivatives. So they're relatively safe, it's straightforward. We know we can boost NAD levels. Uh, and so sort of understanding whether this is a, a practical intervention that's gonna have some real benefits is really exciting because it's not just theoretical, we can do it immediately if we're sure this is the right thing to do. Right, okay, which would, yeah. So, so I think that will lead us into some of the other questions that we have, which is, yeah, how effective and, and, and does it work? So could we, could we kind of step, take a step back um, so NAD, can you explain what is NAD and what, what is its function within the body? Right. So NAD um, is, is the product of vitamin B3, right? So, mm -hmm. so once upon a time, you know, people actually had to go through systematically and kind of figure out which things you need to live. Mm -hmm. And this is on the list, right? Without right. Any, any form of vitamin B3, you'll eventually die. You get a disease called pellagra mm -hmm. that used to be endemic in the Southern US and it's, it's fatal, uh, you know, if untreated. Um, and, and so this is certainly something completely essential. And what it does uh, is participate in a lot of the metabolic reactions that transform the carbohydrates and fats that you eat into energy. Uh, it's, you know, there's a lot of chemical transformations here that you know, we probably don't wanna go through in detail. Those steps you know, release energy uh, in the form of electrons that were parts of those chemical bonds that get broken and NAD accepts those electrons to become NADH. So it cycles back and forth between these two forms. Uh, and it's essentially a, a shuttle factor that it brings that energy, those electrons to the mitochondria that actually produce the ATP that your body can use as chemical energy. And so it's, it's many of the cogs along the way in getting from ingested food to usable energy. <laughs> right. So NAD goes down as we get older this i mean this seems to be accepted right uh, and like the statistic i see is that by the time you're 50 you've lost like 50 uh, half 50 percent of your nad levels so do we do we understand why that is well first of all the you know the numbers i mean there is you're right a consensus that nad falls with age but it's yeah. been really hard to pin it down in terms of numbers. I mean, I think, I think 50%, you know, by the time you're say 50, well, first of all, it's, you know, it's an extrapolation from rodent models and within the rodents, people come up with different numbers, you know? So, so I would say we, we've been doing a lot of work that's, that's hopefully going to be published soon on this. We see about 30% is now sort of the benchmark number we're using for depletion in aged mice compared to young mice. So it's not always that severe, even though it is happening. And it's not every tissue. So we've, we've profiled more tissues too. And we see, you know, that you do get a decline in liver and in muscle and in fat tissue. Uh, there's studies even in humans showing that you do get a decline in the brain. Um, mm -hmm. But in other places like, like the lungs, you know, you may not see 
such a decline. So it's not completely uniform either. Um, now, in terms of understanding why it's happening at all, <laughs> um, there's three major theories right now, right? One is, one is that you're just not making as much because some of the enzymes you need to make it decrease as you age. Mm -hmm. um, is that DNA damage is causing depletion because it activates some enzymes that consume NAD and you do accumulate some DNA damage in your cells as you age. Um, and some of the modification that this enzyme makes with NAD, which would suggest that that, that could be one plausible reason. And the other is that it's uh, inflammation. So there's another enzyme called CD38 that's present on immune cells and that degrades NAD. And that also increases with age. Uh, and so there's, there's kind of these three major ideas that have been floating around for a while. And, and some of the work we've been doing recently is, is, is trying to tease those apart and see which, which one seems more likely to be the major cause or if all three of them are, are acting simultaneously. Right. And I would like to dive into those, yes, in, in definitely in more detail. Um, but I, yeah, it was interesting. Uh, yeah, so across tissue or not was one of my questions and kind of looked at that. Now, I did see in one of your papers that you talked about, uh, so this was um, NAD and aging, right? That you'd actually seen in mouse models that sometimes there was like an 80% decrease in NAD, but the mouse generally showed no negative effects. Um, yeah. So how... How important is it that NAD goes down with age? Do, do, we, do we even know that it's important? Right, so, so that's been a big puzzle for us. So, so, I mean, so that's not natural aging. When we see an 80% decrease, that's what we can get by genetically deleting one of the enzymes responsible right. for making it in a specific tissue. So that was muscle in that case. And you know, what, we, what we thought was you know, either it would only deplete a little bit and the muscle would find another way to make NAD or the animals would be dead. And we were really shocked to see that we could actually deplete it by 80 or 85% and the animals were relatively okay, <laughs> um, at least as young animals. And, and so it, you know, it, it clearly brought up exactly this question you're asking, which is, you know, so that's, that's more depletion than you get with aging. So is it really relevant when it gets depleted in aging? Um, so a couple of things I can add onto that. You know, first of all, the, the animals as they get older, so when they're about seven months old, which is still pretty young for mice, <laughs> um, then look pretty bad, right? Then, then they get right. muscle wasting and they, they really start to fall apart and they actually look like they might be really prematurely aged at that point. Um, you know, so, so it's not okay to indefinitely have really low NAD levels, even though as young adults, they looked pretty okay. <laughs> um, but I think one of the models we have at least to, to try to explain, to reconcile these differences is that in the old animals, we suspect that it's kind of heterogeneous on a cell by cell basis that some of the cells get depleted and some don't. Um, and so you have probably a population when you have 30% decline in NAD in a whole tissue that's mashed up in an, in an aged mouse, it's very likely that you know, that, that something like 30% of those cells have almost no NAD and are completely dysfunctional and 70% are kind of okay and that that makes the tissue not function well. <laughs> right. Okay, interesting. I, which kind of led me to another question. It kind of, so how, how accurately can we measure NAD within the tissue at the moment? I mean, do you have to scrunch it all up and so you just kind of measure it as a, a mass? Yeah, I mean, that's at least those, that's the standard technique. So, uh, and, and that's what, that was what, what most people are relying on. And that's definitely a limiting factor for the field is you need, you need a pretty big chunk of tissue. So you're mi mixing cell types together and you're going through an extraction protocol that we, you know, we hope is quantitative and people are, you know, trying it in different scenarios and getting numbers that agree reasonably well. So we, we hope that these extractions are good and you can spike in some NAD as a standard and show that you can recover it. So. You know, we have some confidence in these protocols, but it, it really does rely on, on mashing up big amounts of tissue. And then people assay the NAD in lots of different ways and argue you know, about whether mass spectrometry is better than liquid, you know, uh, high performance liquid uh, chromatography or, you know, or enzyme-based cycling assays that we do a lot. My experience has been that none of those, those are all accurate. <laughs> you know, the, the trick is in the extraction from the tissue, right? So you've got to get the tissue out of the animal <laughs> without damaging it, you know, and, right. and quickly get it into one of these extraction protocols, um, you know, and, and that, that is a real limitation for the field because it, it's not just at the cell to cell level that the NAD may be varying within the cell, the NAD is compartmentalized. 
So different organelles like the mitochondria that generate energy, you know, have their own pool. There's different concentrations in the cytosol and the nucleus in some cases. You know, the other organelles like peroxisomes and the endoplasmic reticulum have, have their own distinct pools and we're nowhere near, you know, understanding what's going on in all those distinct pools. We're not even at the level of one cell. Right. And, and, and there's, and we don't know whether NAD will move between the different pools. I, I mean, if it's in the cell, it can get, well, it can get into the mitochondria, right? Because you actually found the transporter, I believe, that does that. Um, yes. But the, but the pool is distinct. So the pool is distinct. The NAD and the rest of the cell. And for a while, the mitochondria will hang on to their NAD. Right. You know, and so, so there's this possibility you're always dealing with, even though the cell can move it around. You don't know what's going on at any one moment if a pathway has been activated that would concentrate it in the NAD, or you know if you've depleted it completely from things like the endoplasmic reticulum, um, you know that pool is probably small enough that you would never see it on a whole cell level. You could have you know certain organelles completely deficient and defective, and you would never pick it up with the techniques we use. Right, but they could be. I mean, because each one of these components within the cell provides a vital function. So if it doesn't have any D and it can't perform its function, then that could be fatal for the cell. Yeah. 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 And so that's, so there's, there's a lot of blind spots remaining in this field. <laughs> right. Interesting. Yes. So, oh, so when we, so NAD goes to NADH and it goes back again, right, a lot. Um, so when we say NAD levels, we mean kind of the addition of those two together. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, there's some confusion in the field, right? People, people certainly use that term meaning different things, which, you know, uh, there's kind of a need to standardize our language still a little bit, but generally that, that's what's meant is that, yeah, the total of that pool. Total of that. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button and choose all for any new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.